The sacred moment the Queen was anointed was not aired as a sign of respect. But the secret of process will be tonight in a BBC One documentary. For the first time the Dean of Westminster has allowed the bottle of coronation oil to be viewed by the public. During the Queen's coronation 53 years ago the moment she was anointed was taken off air as a sign of respect for the young monarch. The process is shrouded in secrecy but tonight the Dean of Westminster is allowing the sight of the ornate bottle and its contents to be. A programme starring Her Majesty set to air on BBC One tonight will die close the sacred moment that Elizabeth II was consecrated Queen. The Queen will share her own memories of the day as well as her recollection of her father, George VI's coronation in 1937. The Queen recalled that their preparation for her future reign and coronation began at the tender age of 11, when her father asked her to write an account of his enthronement at Westminster Abbey in May 1937. George VI asked her to write down what she remembered of the wonderful day and during the program she explains that she found the experience extremely valuable. The Queen also admits to royal commentator Alastair Bruce that she has a better recall of her father's coronation than of her own. Her account, written in a school exercise book, was inscribed, to Mummy and Papa, in memory of their coronation, from Lily Bent. By herself. It provides a detailed account of the day, from the moment she leapt out of bed and concludes, I thought it all very wonderful. The arches and beams at the top were covered with a sort of haze of wonder as Papa was crowned. Others, however, had a more frantic day. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Cosmo Lang, fretted about the regalia, not least as his assistant, the Dean of Westminster, was elderly and confused. To make sure the St. Edward's crown was worn the right way, round, the Archbishop attached two threads to the front. But they were removed by an overzealous cleaner and at the critical moment, the Dean handed it over back to front. The Archbishop was left floundering, another annoyance for the King, who had seen one bishop treading on his train and another covering the oath with his thumb. The King wrote in his diary, I never did know whether it was right or not. 